but just to be sure. And we are live. I think, yup, we are live. Um, just do a quick. Um, so we have like one minute to just shake our bodies and do things. <laughs> we are live on YouTube. Okay. Are we live on Twitter? Let me check. We are live on Twitter, are we? Yep, we are live on Twitter. So, Great. we are live. Um, so, all things check in and we are live. Yep, just doing it like social media thingy, retweets and the rest. So, hi folks. Thank you for joining us today. We are back um like we never left yes i mean that sounded really good in my head i don't know it sounded different when i said it <laughs> okay um we are back again for another episode of our you know by monthly live streams last previously we did you know a live stream with the gov the uk folks and when you talked about you know how the um car foundry is you know helping various aspects of the UK government in, you know, scaling some of their digital services. So that's like what we did. So you can check out our previous videos. If you want to see that it's on our YouTube page. So you can just go back and check that at any time. There's a playlist called live streams and you can check that. So the agenda for today, I'm with my good colleague, um, Ram. I mean, everybody knows Ram. Um, Today, we are going to be talking about how to, you know, install Cloud Foundry for Kubernetes on, on um, Azure Kubernetes service. This is a demo. So anything can go wrong. Anything, everything <laughs> can go right. <laughs> I cannot promise you, but fingers crossed. So that's pretty much what we'll be doing today. And the RAM would be, you know, anchoring the whole process. And I will just be here to, you know, disturb RAM with questions and, um, just listen to because I'm also learning. I mean, I learn every day. So, um, Ram, without further ado, without wasting too much time, let's get it. Yeah, let's get started. I'm eager to get the show on road myself. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Like Shadrach mentioned, today's stream is going to be about learning how to install CF for Kids on. Uh, Azure Kubernetes clusters. Now, like most of you um, might know, or for the benefit of those uh, who are new to the stream, the current Cloud Foundry project uh, is focused on simplifying the developer experience around Kubernetes. The vision is to mm -hmm. sort of maintain the modern methods of application deployment and infrastructure and monitoring and all of these things while chipping away at the complexity and simplifying the means to get to these modern and very functional infrastructure best practices. So what that looks like is folks have a Kubernetes cluster and the Kubernetes cluster by itself isn't a lot. You need like a lot of different pieces around the Kubernetes cluster to actually make it functional and to render it useful. So you need logging, you need RBAC, you need some methods for incident management. You need workflows that can get you ingress and configure networking. You need a build process in place to put these artifacts that will, or these containers that will run in the um, container runtime within Kubernetes. So there's a lot of pieces that surround vanilla Kubernetes itself that you need to get right in order to make the Kubernetes strategy and the um, 
and basically get Kubernetes to work well for you. So Cloud Foundry in its historical sort of avatar has been something that simplified the experience on virtual machines. Now today, the community has come together and after a few projects along the way, um, the community has converged around Kubernetes as the de facto choice for container orchestration and backend infrastructure. And the Cloud Foundry project basically brings a lot of these cube native pieces in the form of Istio and um, FluentD and Envoy and all of these things in order to provide that cube native um, feel to the infrastructure backend. But it will provide the convenience of CF push and CF logs and all of these Cloud Foundry um, components as well, which have historically simplified the developer experience for a lot of people, but obviously it's going to extend it to Cloud Foundry. For those who are interested in learning more about all of this, there's obviously like the Cloud Foundry website, um, cloudfoundry.org. This is the project website. So everything, um, that's current about the project, uh, both technical and non-technical um, can be learned from here. But I'd, at the outset, I'd love to point out that we have an upcoming um, Cloud Foundry Summit. It's happening virtually. You can come join us from wherever you are. And um, the event is on the 21st and 22nd of July. It's going to be... Um, online happening at central time uh, US. And, um, you know, folks can join us whenever. So, um, yeah, I guess so. Not whenever, please doing the conference dates. <laughs> I'm the same oh, whenever. Yeah. Yeah, it happens. I think it's happening on the um, 21st of July and 22nd of July, like you can see on the screen. So please come through. It's going to be fun, awesome sessions. And you might you know, say hi to myself and Ram when you come on. We'll be there. Yeah. Now let's move on to like the real deal, I guess. So what I'll start with is... Um, the Azure interface. Um, so some, you need some prerequisites um, in order to get this going, obviously. So the first thing is you need some Kubernetes clusters. Otherwise, you know, you don't have like a deployment target to deploy to. So yep. I have an Azure account here. Um, it's fairly basic. Um, it, it's a, what I'm going to do is create a resource group first. So for those who are not very familiar with what um, um I have a works. question. Yep. Um so anybody can just you know go to the Azure portal of Azure.com, create a, a um a an account and they can follow through this um demo, right? Yeah, absolutely. So if you're yeah, watching, so if you want to try it, you know, by all means, um you can do that. But there might be some restrictions in the number of VMs you can create and stuff like that. Um, although I have got it to work on the free tire, just might take okay. a little longer. Um, okay. I'll point out where those differences uh, might arise as we go I along. See. But All right. uh, yeah, if you want to try it out, you know, you're more than welcome to do so. Awesome. Awesome. So the first thing uh, you need to do is to create a resource group. Okay, so everything in Azure lives within a resource group. And so um, you're more than encouraged, you're more, you're required to create one. So uh, I'm just going to pick a random name. Um, so within this resource group, I'm going to create Kubernetes clusters. Okay, so there's a there's a there's another caveat that you need to remember about resource group. 
I'll explain that to you as soon as the cluster gets created. Uh, but just to sort of introduce the topic, Azure always creates what is known as a node resource group along with this custom resource group. Okay, so some of the Kubernetes resources will get created inside the node resource group. And so if you have a domain name that you want to connect to, if you have a public IP, like the one that we'll be using, you have to make use of the node resource group as the target resource group where you create that. I'll show you what that is in just a bit. But if you find two resource groups, don't be surprised. That's um, that's the sort of message. So Azure CF demo is going to be the name of my cluster. Now I have allowance to create five B4 VMs, if I'm not wrong. And- um, Ram? Yeah. Um, so when it comes to like, you know, configuration and, you know, um, the amount of VMs they need, is there like any specific amount of VMs and, you know, CPUs that they need to have to be able to, for this to work perfectly? Yeah. So the recommended size from the CFR kits team is to have five VMs that each have four vCPUs and 16 gigs of RAM each. Um, however, in practice, I've found that it works on smaller machines as well. So the, this is, this is the recommendation from the CF team. So five nodes, um, four CPU, 16 gigs, um, each node. I'm going to run with that, but it's okay to have slightly smaller configurations if, um, that's what you have access to. Mm, but, um, you know, essentially it, it works on three nodes. I have seen it work on two nodes once, but I wouldn't recommend it. So three is like a very sane choice. Five is the recommended. So I'm just going to try and create here. Hopefully validation and everything will pass through. Okay. Okay. So this, this should take like, okay, it passed. Okay. Yeah. So I'm just going with defaults everywhere. I've not changed anything. Um, the default Kubernetes version is 119.11, but I think it works even if you have like 118 or 170 up to 116, I think. Um, um, although it's always good to like be as um, ahead as possible. So I'm going to go ahead and create the cluster. Now this will take a few minutes. Like I mentioned, it's going to create the CFR gates, um, the Azure CF demo uh, cluster, and then it's going to configure all the networking. In the meantime, there's a few other things that um, we'll need to sort out. So I'm going to switch to my command line for a bit. Hopefully this is visible and should like to confirm. Yup, it is. All right. So there's a few tools that you will need access to um, when you're going through the installation. So I'm going to leave this here. Mm, we'll know when it's done. And these tools are all basically for access to like different pieces, doing some um, doing the final installation um, and also the kubectl tool, obviously. So just a quick check. Um, the Azure command line tool. So AZ is the command, but it's the Azure CLI. So just make sure that that's available and installed. That's number one. Um, then there's what is variously known as kubectl or kubectl or kubectl. Um, I don't know which camp you might be in about how to pronounce it, but it's basically the Kubernetes command line utility. Kubectl, everybody agrees with kubectl. Kubectl. <laughs> 
it's just like pro- pronouncing my, my SQL and my SQL. Yes, yeah. usually confusing. <laughs> There's also a cu- uh, uh, cube control camp shit rack. So the the debate is raging. So I don't want to pick sides, <laughs> but you know, whatever you want to call it is what you call it. So make sure mm-hmm. you have cube control, and then there is. Um, the cfcli so cfcli is the cloud foundry cli um so you will need that obviously to operate um the cloud foundry installation once it's ready and there's also a tool called bosch the reason uh, i have bosch installed right now is because this demo is going to use like a few experimental tools that we have to generate some certificates and um um basically make use of an auto gen script for some certificates and things like that as part of the install process that is not absolutely recommended for production use um because obviously as a company or as an org you will have these certificates and these things um ready for you outside the scope of this but just for purposes of this demo i have bosch installed but for information bosch is like a cloud foundry project Uh, as well um so it's um, it's a known tool in the ecosystem the cloud foundry foundation continues to um you know govern the maintenance of it and it's an open source tool um that's uh, that's built and maintained by the community next um there's going to be two tools that we use right called ytt and cap now these two are part of a camp known as carvel um so there was historically something called k14s kubernetes tools for managing the life cycle of various kubernetes um artifacts and um those tools have come under an umbrella i guess uh, organization known as carvel and carvel is now part of vmware so technically these are owned by vmware but they're also like open source tools that can be used to deploy to kubernetes now it's uh, it's a it's an alternative to let's say some stuff like helm or um, even using kubectl apply to build like custom resource definitions and stuff uh but these are like the bare minimum number of tools that you need so ytt is a templating tool we'll be using it to generate some yamls and um validate some of the yamls that we make uh cap is going to be used to finally take these yamls and then deploy the custom resources to the kubernetes cluster so i noticed that our kubernetes cluster is ready yep So the first thing that I'm going to be doing is to connect to the cluster. So just copy this command, paste it. So basically it will set the current context in kubectl to be the current cluster that we've created. Now I'm going to go into resource groups to show you um what i meant by custom resource groups and the node pool resource group so as you can see there's two resource groups here um and it shares like a long name with um the custom resource group that we created so inside this is the kubernetes cluster that we created obviously it doesn't have much right now um but then if you go inside this resource group you will see that all the resource um resources that are basically required for this kubernetes cluster to function are available here so um that's the purpose of this resource group now um i don't have a great answer for why it is the way it is but um yeah i was about to ask <laughs> i'm happy that you didn't cuz um i don't know the answer to that but hopefully um 
we'll soon get someone from the azure team to just clarify but it's a it's a design where i think they've decided to sort of decouple some of the underlying piping with this and stuff like that now the first thing we are going to do um is to create a static ip and that static ip is going to be used to manage um access to into this cluster so remember once again um you are going to create this static ip inside the node pool resource group and not the resource group that you custom made for practical purposes they are both the same um but internally obviously they they have some differences so let's get started so i'm going to create this the command line way the way i guess developers like so it's going to be a static ip um that's going to be public facing so it's a networking command so you can obviously identify that and now i'm going to use this resource group here so just to avoid typos i'm going to type that and then i'm going to name this azure demo ip the rest of this command is like just parameters so it's going to be a static ip so okay. the dns name is again just some identifier name that we are going to give and then finally i am just going to have it print this ip address okay so the result of this command is that it should create an ip address for us in this node and then it should return that ip address value to us so unless i've had any typos they should work okay Yep. Yeah. So, um, what is the IP address for? The IP address is going to be used to manage ingress and egress from the cluster. Okay. okay. What I mean by that is, you can make use of either an IP address or a uh, Hmm. Domain name. So, um, it, it, it's 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 need is basically to say um, some CF endpoint dot domain. Um, so you need something that it can point to and get that information, uh, and that's okay. really what we are going to be uh, using this IP for. So. does that make okay. sense do you okay. want a little yeah. more clarity? yeah that okay um yeah pretty much makes sense and i hope it makes sense to the people watching <laughs> next i'm going to switch to the github repo all right so i'm going to make a folder here and inside this folder i'm just going to quickly clone the cfr gates code base so basically this is like the entire code base of um cfr gates it has like a bunch of different config stuff but it also has okay. like everything you need in order to um deploy cf2 the kubernetes cluster uh, i'm going to make a directory called config files where i'm going to um 
auto generate some config files that I'm going to use for the deployment. So let's see. So from this base directory, um, basically there's a, um, like I mentioned, there's like a tool that can help you generate values. I'll show you what these values look like in a minute, but basically it's like a bunch of certificates and other things that um, are going to be used to complete the final deployment. Now you can make use of these for testing purposes, but again, like okay. I mentioned, it's not recommended for production use. You should have your own certificates and things like that. So the, this uh, code gen tool basically is just for um, for purposes of this demo or any other demo that you're going to try. Now the next thing is uh, I'm going to use a hackish way to um, get to The cluster. So we created this IP. So I'm going to append this IP with the nip.io nip service. So basically, what it will do is it will provide me a routing like I had a domain. So ideally, at this point, you would say some domain dot extension, um, and then consequently, your apps will be apps dot domain dot extension. Like for example. Um, Okay. Let's see. Um, forgive me for opening an embarrassingly large number of windows, but um, so your domain should essentially look like this. Um, and then your cloud foundry subdomains will be, all your apps will be like that. Um, and then your API will be api.domain.extension. This is what your CF API would look like. And um, if let's say you had a test app, so it will be test app.apps.domain.extension. And so in our case, it, what will happen is it will end up looking like um, test app.apps. This ugly ip.nip.io so that 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 will be a little ugly, mm -hmm. but um, you know that's basically what um, what we are um, configuring this with. So, but it's a it's a good way to get started, and so we can always make use of that. So, what I'm going to do is um, create this first YAML um, with this IP inside it. Um, so, obviously, there's um, that warning bit, like I mentioned, but um, it's um, it's known to work okay. <laughs> so I'm going to stop sharing for a little bit because some of the information uh, might be passwords and things. So I'll open up the file, uh, make sure that it's you know scrubbed a little, and then open the stream back up. So just like yeah. give me a minute. Yeah, show no secrets on the internet. So while we wait for Ram to, you know, put in the right secrets, um, if you need, if you need, like, if you need a hands-on, um, um, if you need, a, if you need something to go back to, like a more straightforward tutorial and shorter tutorial on how to do this, um, we have a video of um where Ram also talks through um, this entire process on how, like, you know, how to deploy the whole um, clear for case cluster on um, Azure Kubernetes service. You can check it out on our YouTube page. It's also on the YouTube page, um, channel. Um, it's, I think it's the latest, sort of like the latest video. So you could you probably see it on your own page when you go to the cloud on YouTube. So there's that. And also, if you have any question, I am monitoring the YouTube channel. You can drop your questions. You can ask. Um, Cloud Foundry on Twitter, and I would make sure to see your questions and ask Ram any of your questions. So, yeah, good to go, Ram. Mm -hmm. I'm still, um, I'm still putting those um, details in. So, like, I need a minute. 
Okay, someone asked, what is the option dash OTSV for? Can you remember? I think when you were typing, um, I think it's related to Azure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can tell you what that is for. So basically, it's just to return the IP address. So the last bit, the okay. dash query is I'm querying the API for the IP address and then I'm getting it to return uh, the, the IP address we just created basically. I'll show you the output on the terminal. Um, it will be more clear, but give me like a second. Okay, so um, if you need any, have any more specific questions, just drop it on the YouTube chat and I will do well to relay your questions to Ram. Um, so Ram, how are we doing on the secret ends of things? Good, I'm almost, I'm done. So I'm going to come back. Okay. Share everything. Yeah, so basically the, oh. Man, I think I cleared the screen, so I don't have that, uh, but let's see. Before I did that, so this last part of the query here is, yeah. the, I'm, I'm querying the Azure API for the address that we created and then here I'm just asking for the output in TSV. So I see. Okay. When, when I uh, let's see. Yeah. So basically it will hit the AZ network thing and then it will fetch this um, value for me, which is where I got uh, this IP printed on the command line from. So it's optional. It's basically for getting some um, information back from the API. Hopefully that I clarifies um, what it is. Okay, I hope that answers your question. Have any more questions? Just drop it in the chat, so and I'll this be happy is to. A, an older version of the file that I used. Um, so this is the this is the, a few parameters might be different, uh, but basically, like I mentioned, this is the domain that we use there, and so your um, CF URLs are going to end up looking like this. Um, here, like, here are like a bunch of different certificates that it has, and then it'll end with like my Docker credentials and stuff. So I'm not going to go through the end of the file, but basically it has that. Now you also need to specify like one um, load balancer parameter. And um, that's also, um, you know, as part of, you just have to say enable load balancer and you have to make sure that the static IP that you generated is actually in use. So I'm just going to double check if I have all the right values. So I'm going to go off screen share for a minute um, and come back on in like two minutes. Just let me double check what I have. Okay, sounds fair, sounds fair. Definitely wouldn't want to be sharing my secrets. I think I made a mistake one time in a live stream where I showed one of my, some of my secrets, I think. So I had Not to delete that cluster. All. And <laughs> I think you know the live stream I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> it was just 
I mistake on the job and I had to delete the entire cluster and create new one, do the be do the installation just so we are on the same side of things. Do not share your secrets on the internet or for any reason to anybody else other than yourself and you know your colleagues. It's quite important. Yeah, so so right now I have this one config file. And now what I'm going to do next is to generate um, the final config file that will do our installation. So for that, I'm going to use the ytt command. Um, I'm going to point at the config folder. So that's one set of files that um, ytt needs. Uh, the other file is the CF config that's here. And then I'm going to put that in um, something called deploy config.yaml or something of that sort. Okay, so now I should have two files in this directory. So that's the deploy config. So this final config file has uh, a whole bunch of other certificates and other things which will be required for the final installation. And it will basically help complete like the deployment. Now, just so you know, um, the deployment process, irrespective of which cloud provider you're using is the same pretty much. Uh, there's like few things here and there that might alter a bit, but essentially it's creating this one configuration file. There's like a couple of steps to it. Um, and then creating the Kubernetes cluster on the respective um, like cloud provider. And um, we've tried this with Google Cloud in the past, DigitalOcean, Azure, it works perfectly fine. We still have a little work to do on the AWS front. Hopefully um, we'll be able to bring a demo and present that information to you as well um, sooner rather than yeah, soon. Soon, soon. I think we should reach out to folks at AWS and see if there's any way we can, you know, speed up the whole process. Mm -hmm. Sure. So let's deploy this. What's the? Yeah, I think that should be for the yeah deploy config. Yeah. It's the command. So it's just cap. What, whatever the application interface that you want to use. So in this case, CF, and then point to the file mm -hmm. that is the deploy config.yml. So, okay. Yeah, I think we remembered to do everything. <laughs> um, and yeah, hopefully this works. If not, Shadrach, I'm blaming you as always. <laughs> I did not do anything. I need to say anything. <laughs> Okay, so fingers crossed. <laughs> wow. Okay. I think it's supposed to be a capital letter E, I think. Hmm. I forgot the keyword. <laughs> so cap deploy oh. dash A um, CF and dash F. Okay. Oh, looks like it is working. Yep, it'll ask me for a confirmation now and... Continue, yes. But there's a... This is going to run for like the next 15, 20 minutes. Um, not 15, 20 more like 10, 15, but <laughs> essentially it's creating like a bunch of different CRDs on the back end. And there's a nice tool that you can use to verify what's going on. So I love K9S. Mm, it's also an open K9S. source project. Yeah. I think we that all love K9S. Mm -hmm. Basically show all of the um, stuff that's you know being generated on the back end. So once the CRD start creating, you'll see like um, them getting created here. And um, if you enjoy looking at like 
the logs command line just flying in front of you and um all of that then this is like a great it's very calming <laughs> at least for for me so there you go the first um things start getting created it, so uh, it make i think it makes you look like like an a movie hacker you know you know all these movies where they just probably run a single command and just you know they're trying to hack into a, the CIA or something or the NSA <laughs> so it gives that kind of you know that same energy <laughs> don't get us banned from youtube shadrack <laughs> i'm just kidding i'm just kidding yeah 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 no but um yeah jokes apart if you folks have any questions now would be excuse me now would be a great time to ask and have them answer Okay, let me yeah. check if there's any. Okay, just gonna check. Um, no, on Twitter, no, just tweet us some of your questions so you can point to at Cloud Foundry and get those questions answered. Um. So. Um. Someone asks. Looks like Ram is following a step-by-step doc to complete his whole setup. Is it possible to have the same to share the same with us? Um, yeah, there's definitely. I think I think you have a video on this, right? I think I mentioned it. Yeah, there is a video available on YouTube um, that condenses this long process into like five minutes or so. Um, so you can definitely follow that. uh if you're the sort that like okay, let me let me share it that's going to be available on our medium um i'll post a link to the official Soon. cloud foundry blog as well there's also a process in place where we are converting this to a tutorial on tutorials.cloudfoundry.org um and i will post a link to that um as well just um, going to share a video yet. share link to the video here okay so i just share the link to the chat on youtube so if you need the video to the video you can go ahead and check it out any other questions besides that um none for now none for now so i'll just check scroll through twitter and see if there's any um there's any okay checking 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 um okay um Okay. Um. Okay. None for now, I guess. Mm-hmm. None for now. So we hold on. We have roughly eighteen. No, I think seventeen more minutes to wrap this up. I mean, I think it's nice that. I think it's nice that you went through the whole installation process from you know getting it from on the cluster to you know now trying to show us how to deploy it on the cluster you know then after this process it's going to now maybe deploy an app or something I don't know but if there's time for that or some other time so I think I like I like that that was really really um engaging and you know a lot of people can have something they can always go back to to see okay ram has done this before how did ram do this it's really really interesting yeah Appreciate hopefully that. we'll have enough time to push an app and um show what the experience is really about um so it's just one change hopefully it's done in like a few minutes um Mm-hmm. Yep. Should be done, should be done. So that's why I like watching these things. So everything is complete. 
um once the series starts okay it's so, think it's continue creating the container yeah it's created about 300 containers so <laughs> wow that's a lot of processing power in a few minutes yeah if i think if this istio thing goes through we should be gold okay yep yes woohoo yay we are it's good. good so that's the success message that um that indicates that the installation has completed successfully now remember those ugly things that i showed you so we are going to make use of this to um so log into the cluster on the time on the time now yeah we are going to make use of this endpoint um so like i mentioned cf is the command line tool that we use to um install things onto the cluster and we're going to be making use of um the cf cli um mm -hmm. so the way we set this as the target endpoint is to say cf api and then provide this endpoint now i'm adding this here because i don't have ssl certificates associated with this uh yeah cf best practices for production obviously would um it would have you install these ssl certificates but that's a conversation for some other day yeah so Things are not exactly fun. <laughs> so I'm going to use the credentials that I configured to log in. So. Okay. So you do you did this while you were installing the cluster, right? Say what? You know, you said you, I said you did this when you were generating the values for um say for kids before deploying, right? That's right. So when I went offline. a couple of times these are the values that i was configuring onto that um onto those um files so basically the admin access email the password and things like that now there are ways by which you can configure your ldap or saml based authentication to the cf backend uh, but again that's a slightly different conversation that we need to be having um there's some information that you can find on the blog i think shadrack wrote a piece up recently uh, but basically um, you know there's there's folks who've effectively had um, their official sort of backends um, integrated to cf installations now the way cf is organized is you have tenants called um, orgs and spaces there is a system generated org you know called system for lack of a very creative name uh, but you can always create an org um and so i'm just going to call this yeah i think i wrote something oh it's not yet published yet but soon 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 it's coming out i guess and then yeah. inside so. orgs you can have spaces so the way it's organized is there's a cf foundation a cf foundation has different orgs and then inside each of these orgs you can have different spaces um spaces. and then you can create like roles that basically map to um have the access users yeah, permissions access rather than transparency levels yeah so yeah. all your permissions are configured based on these orgs and these targets so i'm going to create a so space. more like i think more like more like rbac in um kubernetes just cf version of rbac in kubernetes i guess
Okay, you're not doing something right. I think I had okay. an extra okay. flag. Sorry. All right. So mm -hmm. it does like a bunch of different roles um, being assigned to me. Space manager. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, so all these the roles actually. Yeah. So all these roles are actually predefined by Cloud Foundry. I think there are about eighteen different rule types in um, the Cloud Foundry ecosystem. So um, you can check the Cloud Foundry documentation for, um, for more information about the various types of rules available. So here I have a Node.js app because Shadrach loves JavaScript. Um, so yes. I'm going to push this app and basically the deployment experience for this app is just to say cf push um, give an app name and that's it so no yamls no docker files no nothing so the contents of this very minimal javascript app are going to be converted into a container and then that container will be taken and deployed onto the Cloud Foundry, um, the, by the Cloud Foundry pass onto the um, Kubernetes Docker, uh, Kubernetes uh, container runtime. Sorry, I shouldn't have said Docker. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> so basically, all of this is automated. So you don't have to worry about writing Docker files. You don't have to worry about um, creating like a path to um, the Kubernetes cluster. Um, there will be a URL that is configured um, automatically. You can obviously overwrite that with your own parameters and things like that. But for simplicity's sake, we just pushed and all of these, all of the ingress, all of the networking, all of the log connections and stuff will be taken care of. Um, now, as this build happens, um, I will point out to like a few uh, parts that are very relevant. Uh, the first bit is about this. So Cloud Foundry for kids basically makes use of a container registry. In this case, we are making use of um, Docker Hub as the container registry. And all the stuff that gets, all the layers of the container that gets built go to the container registry. And uh, now because this is like the first time this app is being pushed to this cluster, it's going to uh, have to create all of the layers. Now in subsequent pushes, a lot of this process is going to become um, redundant because the layers are going to be available and CF will just uh, use existing layers and it will detect that some of these layers don't need to be rebuilt. So it will make use of that. The next part is about Paketo and build packs. So Cloud Foundry has always used a technology known as build packs to create um, the, the, the container image, so rather the final immutable artifact that gets deployed. Um, now our app has already been deployed Now, without sort of going into too much details about other pieces. Let's just take a look at this. Now, this is a warning that we are getting because we don't have um, SSO. SSL certificates in place, uh, but essentially you can see here. So this is the format of the thing that I promised. So we have Azure demo .nip io because that's the name of the app that we configured. Um, so yeah, that's, that's the app. Um, we could probably try pushing other apps as well, but basically uh, just to sort of complete that discussion, uh, build packs are the technology that basically take the source code, convert them into containers, and then make those containers available for uh, deployment. So uh, the input for a build pack is source code. The output is OCA compatible container images. Containers. Yeah. yeah um, so there's a, there's a question. Okay, mm -hmm. go on. I'll just, I'll... Go um, someone asks, is it possible? Yeah. Yeah. Is it someone said, is it possible to use ACL instead of Docker Hub as the container registry? 
right yeah um you can configure any yeah. container registry that you want so we have um successfully done github gitlab GitHub, gitlab um and um um docker hub um i know that the community has shown support for google container registry uh, and um i don't see why acl should not work although i think um we should definitely try it and um you know upload a demo sometime soon so by all yeah. means yes yeah um it should work yep should yeah so um these build packs basically will detect the language that is being used so nowhere i mentioned during deployment that it's like a uh, javascript app so it just detected that on its own it built it and then you know this it uploads like the final images to um the docker uh, registry and so subsequent um builds will be much faster so i'm going to quickly um see if i can deploy another app somewhere so yeah we have we are right on time funny no <laughs> let's see so yeah there's this go example that i see? have here let's see if i can push that Oh, no actually cf push go example yeah yeah so, so if you I... don't have a manifest file i i just need to retreat on that so if you don't have a manifest of why i'm on file where you specify your app name every time you do a cf push you have to provide your app the your preferred app names command for it to actually work so that's why ram had an issue there so always be mindful of that yeah so you can compare this um output so again the deployment experience was just cf push go example um i'm not really sure what this app does yet but um build packs um were able to detect the language and then make use of the right um you know build process the run process the dependency um stuff and then it sort of knows what to do now it crashed didn't start um i don't know why yet but we can always you know figure that out but essentially in terms of um the deployment process itself um it it just works and so if you look at um uh, the k9s here so this is the app that ran successfully um so you can see its logs somewhere Let's see yeah so that's running successfully um this one not so much um yeah i mean it basically ran it ran so, yeah, yeah you ran it created the cluster but there is no like uh, front end web start command i guess yeah 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 there's no front end so, for it so you just executed it in the um terminal in the logs rather not a not a good example to show i guess yeah um yeah anyhow so that's that's really um you know what we wanted to show so our medium publication has like a lot of tutorials for folks to get started um cloudfoundry.org is the project website so please visit um for all of the information that you need um we will be posting links to the doc the additional install video and all of those things that we have so huh? you know um um check it out when you have time and don't forget to check out the summit uh page and do register and join us if you found what we had um what we've shown today as uh, as something interesting and something that you'd like okay so that's is it Ram has successfully demoed how to install a 
safe for kids close down Azure Kubernetes service without having any errors, actually, which is pretty good. Which is actually, the, I think, is this the first time we're doing a demo without you know having anything break? <laughs> I'm not answering that question. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to be transparent. I mean, it, it is not a demo if nothing breaks, right? I mean, mm-hmm. sometimes this breaks when you demo stuff. So yeah, so that's pretty much it. Um, that's all we have today. We're trying to keep on time. We promise one hour, and we're gonna do one hour on the dot. So um, thank you so much, everybody, for doing the, um for coming through. Um, Ram, thank you for doing this. Um, it's always awesome to see you do stuff uh, with CF and um. Yeah, so um, goodbye, everybody. Do not forget to register for the CF Summit coming up on the 21st of July and the 22nd of July. So it's going to be interesting. Lots of awesome speakers, lots of user stories coming up. It's just going to be really, really good. So go to cloudforum.org, click on the Join Us um, button on the homepage for the CF Summit, and you're good to go. So... That's pretty much it. And have a nice morning, I guess, afternoon and the end of your